injured here, 2v2 exhibition Golgotha Depths, this is Dawn of War 2 Elite, the experimental balance mod blue team. We have Twilight Elite as an Inquisitor offensive commander, fights melee to start off, can get range weapons, lots of crowd control and a little bit of support. Alongside G-Pipe as an Eldar Farseer support commander, fights melee, has a lot of buffs and debuffs. Red team, Keltos, the creator of the mod alongside Kolaris is a Chaos Lord, durable and destructive commander, fights melee, can walk through cover and cannot be suppressed, good offense and disruption. And Dark Riku plays an apothecary support commander, fights melee to start off, can heal and also emits a passive health regeneration aura. So yes, this is the Elite Balance mod. It changes a ridiculous amount of stuff. I couldn't really absorb all of the changes, but I will put a link in the description so you can check it out yourself. You can also see some of Keltos' reasonings there. Straight away I noticed that the Apothecary is up to 65 hit points from his default 550. Tactical Marines are back up to their old school 1050 hit points. I'm not sure if that comes along with a cost increase. You can also notice that the Apothecary has a pretty cool new model. Over on a blue team. Guardians have been replaced by Dire Avengers. Basically just a fluff change I think. Dire Avengers are actual aspect warriors unlike Guardians who are just militia. Come along with their own portrait as well. Looks like we have a new portrait for the Inquisitor but I don't think any model changes. Nope. Guardsmen though do have some pretty cool new models I think look a lot more dangerous tactical marines stuck in this building and out they get and they retreat and did not lose a model tactical marines health increase but they also give more experience now when they go down so it's even more important to stop them dying and losing models because you'll be feeding your opponent a lot more xp double Kel space marines for keltos they have a new helm I'm not sure if they've got any changes offhand. Inquisitor going after them. Most likely going to see the Holy Brazier for her. Since that would give her a power melee weapon against all of this heavy armor on the red team. Aspiring Champion Heretix. The Aspiring Champion has a really cool new model. Don't think they have much mechanic changes. And this mod, by the way, doesn't just change numbers and values. It completely reworks some of the mechanics and adds entirely new abilities and everything. Devastators on the field for Dark Recoup. Set up team that's suppressed with a heavy bolter by default. Tactical Marines there with a flamer. He's going to try and bash this power at some point I would think. Going to retake this south power. We have a contested VP in the middle. Natural for red in this southwest corner. Natural for blue in the northeast corner. Howling Banshees on the field for g -Pipe. Light melee unit with power weapons. Don't think they got any major changes apart from a cost decrease. I think Dire Avengers also got a cost decrease compared to Guardians. But their Warlock leaders got a cost increase to balance it out and so forth. And look at this red team hitting power. They have a 2 to 1 but Quite a VP deficit to make up, 487349. Tax hitting power, here come Eldar to defend, they better turn and engage. Combi Flamer on the Chaos Lord. That stuff's really bunched up, oh we are going to see Immolate. Crazy crazy damage on those Dire Avengers, Howling Banshees in amongst some Chaos Space Marines now though. Here we see the Sentinel from Twilight Lee. you now have to purchase the ground pound stomp ability for this guy. I think it's 50 rec, 15 power or something from what I remember from the vast amount of notes. It also gives it a health increase though I believe. As you can see, there we go. Gives it 100 health. We even get a little icon for the upgrade. So much work put into this mod. Lots of new models and all sorts. 
lots of retreating Kel Space Marines. I don't think Keltos lost a squad though. Devastators coughing the VP there. And look at this. Inquisitor has that Holy Brazier. 50 DPS power melee weapon. And now is using silently on herself to go infiltrated. And she is going to make these Devastators pay. Look at the DPS she is putting out on this guy's fantastic special attack as well. And she's going to wipe this squad, I think. Bang. Picking some serious Marine arse. And... Dark Riku goes tier 2, he might not now, he's lost those Devastators, and in fact, yes, cancels tier 2 and replaces the Devastators. Dark Riku, very, very highly rated Apothecary player back in the day when the Apothecary was considered a lot more viable than he is now generally. There are some people that still play the Apothecary. Tactical Marines using their Flamer to burn down some of these guardsmen all of these players incidentally very very top players not sure how active they still are Twilight Lee one of the best Imperial Guard players around I think Keltos pretty adept at every faction G-Pipe a very good all-round player as well 390 334 a 2 to one cap for blue and I think this Devastator is pretty vital. Dark Riku recognising that, which is why he replaced it immediately. Inquisitor doesn't have... Oh, she does. She is going silently again. And here is the Apothecary. Is he going to heal? Yes, pops a heal on those Devastators. No war gear for this guy yet. And again, the Inquisitor kicking some serious ass. Takes out two Devastator models. Scouts in retreat. Red team retaining their natural. And look at this Keltos going after Blue's natural now. Aspiring champion Heretics capping and he's going to harass this power again. Full retreat from those guardsmen. Tier 2 for G Pipe. The last to go. Twilight Lee is already there. Plasma Devastator on the way for Dark Recruit. Keltos just hitting tier 2 now. Lots of map control for Red team here. 385330. Howling Banshee is chasing stuff off. Stopped dead by Aspiring Champion Heretics, which are such a strong counter for Howling Banshees. Those Heretics, though, were under strength and are going to be lucky to get away here with two models. Howling Banshees kicking some ass now. Forcing off double tap, double CSM, sorry. Elder Farseer has her Spirit Stones. And Singing Spear on the way. Tactical Marines flaming down this central power. They don't want to steal it, it looks like. 350, 330. I think Red Team know they have a power advantage since their power hasn't been touched yet. So might as well burn this thing down. Farseer should be dealt with by those Devastators. Apothecary now starting to kick himself out. Has Armor of Purity. No changes there from what I can see. And improved medical equipment. 327. 330. Chaos Dreadnought on the way for Keltos. Twilight Lee going for some Stormtroopers. No tier 2 units for G Pipe yet. Spending resources, kitting out their farce here. And most likely, yes, we have the Howling Banshee Exar with her Executioner Spear. Dire Avengers. Looks like they have their Warlock Leader or whatever he's called now. There he is with that melee weapon and shuriken pistol. Chaos Dreadnought on the field. I think this got a small model change. Yes. The helm area looks slightly different. Starts with that auto cannon. Good damage versus all targets and a small AOE. In terms of changes, I think all of the marks were normalized. Well, both of the marks normalized to 100 Wreck 30 power, Blood Rage got its duration reduced. Inquisitor now gonna run into this Devastator and retreats. Red team can retake their natural flu team. Seem to be neglecting the flanks largely. 301, 309. Very, very close in VPs. 
Manticore on the way for Twilight Elite. G Prep has a Bright Lance, could set it up on this raised area, and looks like that's what they're gonna do. This Dreadnought needs to be very careful because we have that Singing Spear as well, as well as those Banshees. She has her Rune Armor, which I think, I believe, grants her an entirely new ability. It doesn't say so in the tooltip, so I might have got that wrong. Might be another armor that does. We have Bloodlust by the Chaos Lord. That's one of his global abilities, you can tell by these markings on the CSM buffing damage. Sentinel now has its missile launcher, which got a cost decrease. Wants to change to crack grenades to shoot this dreadnought, I think. These are still frag grenades. Frag missiles, sorry. Crack, there we go. There's the crack missile forcing off the Chaos Dreadnought. Some decent DPS and utility from those Sentinels if you can start upgrading the things, as you can see. Dire Avengers capping this Northern Power. Should be able to do so as well. Map control pretty even. 298, 293, Manticore Strike on the Devastators. And Dark Recruit just realizes in time. Where are the Heavy Bolter Devastators? Also in retreat. Inquisitor using her mandate to get in amongst the scouts. There's a frag grenade which misses everything. Chaos Lord with armor of the Inferno. You just saw let the galaxy burn there. 284, 293. Chaos Dreadnought needs to be very careful down to 352 hit points. Inquisitor runs away. Here come a bunch of Eldar though. Double Dire Avengers with their battle equipment and Howling Banshees. As you can see the battle equipment buffing the Dire Avengers damage. No mention of it buffing their health anymore. Probably to balance them out from their cost decrease in general. Double Plasma Grenade to miss and the Eldar forced to retreat getting doubled now. Magical Strike on these Marines. And pretty much avoided but did force off those plasma devs again. Here is the Manticore heavy artillery unit. Huge range and damage potential. But quite vulnerable. We haven't seen red team go after it yet. Of course they don't know where it is. Scouts get a heal from the apothecary. I'm going to try and decap blues natural 242, 293. Tier 3 for g Pipe Dark Recruit is already tier 3. We could use and he's going to decap this wreck point with his apothecary. 232, 293, a double for red now. Tactical Marines hitting Cal with their missile launcher. There's malignant blindness from the Chaos Lord, reducing the vision of all enemy units. Global ability of his, really useful as well for pushing against a really heavily defended position as such. Corn Shrine up by these heretics they are also worshipping. There's a Manticore Strike trying to take out the Shrine and fails. Hits the container and doesn't does very little damage to the Shrine. 184, 293, a double for red. Still, North Eldar Farseer scares off the Chaos Lord. She can be pretty dangerous in melee combat with that Singing Spear. Tier 3 now for Keltos and Toilo Lee. Keltos the last to go. Plasma Dev set up covering the center. Also have Heavy Bolter Devastators. D Cannon now on the field for G Pipe. Huge range on this setup team artillery unit. Everything heading to the north for a little ruckus. For the carry backing off all of that range fire. And Tactical Marines were suppressed there by something, I'm not sure what. Wash out on the Banshees, suppressing and scaring off this entire blob. Retreat grenade attempt by g Pipe just a little too soon. Sentinel now will decap mid. Bright Lance shooting up a node. 
Loads of stuff died here as well. Devastators get away with two models. Inquisitors are chasing them off. We have Stormtroopers on the field with their anti-armor kit giving them melter guns. From the look of it, the Stormtrooper Sergeant does not get a melter gun in this mod. As you can see, he still has his overcharged las gun. Or hotshot las gun, sorry. 140, 290. Not sure if that's an intentional change from Keltos or he just hasn't got around to adding it yet along with Kolaris but I think the sergeant having a melter gun makes sense Apothecary healing up those tactical marines straight away you see the power of the Apothecary there bringing a unit straight up to combat readiness immediately Stormtroopers trying to hit power with their melter guns which they are pretty good at I think Stormtroopers with anti armor kit are the best anti vehicle unit in the game Here comes some aspiring champion heretics, level 2, and they are getting given grenades. They will lose all their melee effectiveness, but become a pretty decent little artillery unit. Here come Howling Banshees after the CSM, and they're in big trouble. We have Markov Corn for these guys, from what I can see, no major changes. And we have Markov Zinch for these guys. There might be changes in terms of costs and things. Land Trader Redeemer on the field for Dark Riku Super Unit for Space Marines. Will this Sentinel get away? It does. Devastate is really bad news for Imperial Guard, but they are forcing them off since they are fully upgraded with Commissars and Plasma Guns. Here is the Land Trader Redeemer. Basically, a mobile base gives a health regeneration or allows you to reinforce, allows you to retreat to it, and it's not bad in combat as well. Two Flamestorm, flamestorm Cannons even on the sides. Twin link the salt cannon on the top and the multi melter. But as you can see, very, very slow. Also has those grenade launchers on the front, you can see them. One there and one on the other side. Right Lance getting hits off on this thing. Dark Riku using it to push, backing it up with infantry. Elder Farseer taking a lot of damage here, but she's going into melee. Right Lance now cannot hit the land raider. Land Raider has brought itself back into the firing arc though. We have some Corn Worship that was a singularity from the D cannon. Farseer gets away. Devastator can't hit anything. Manticore Strike on the Land Raider there. Land Raider cannot get rear armor hits since in tabletop it has, I believe, 14 armor all the way around. Ouch, rocket run! Almost wipes those plasma devs. And red team take mid. 136, 139. Avatar of Kane on the way for G Pipe. Keltos lost a lot of stuff. Now has double CSM level 2. Both of them going for a Chaos Predator. There's Lele Galaxy Burn. We have some Terminators on the field for Dark Riku. He has a Land Raider Redeemer and now Terminators. Combined. With an apothecary, these guys are going to be very, very difficult to kill. I assume that the health regeneration aura of the Land Raider stacks with the apothecary, who now has his Mastercrafted Bolt up, by the way. Another change I did not mention is that headquarters give you a 50% damage reduction aura, so it's a lot more difficult to get gibbed in base while you're retreating and such. Here comes the Avatar of Kane super unit for Eldar. Very, very powerful melee combat. Very, very tough and emits a path passive buff AoE. You see those Banshees have it. That's the blue things under their feet. Land Raider Redeemer just took a big magical strike and a singularity in here. I think this Land Raider Redeemer is done for and goes down thanks to the Avatar and stuff. Only had the no, didn't even have scouts to repair it. Howling Banshee's now running right. Mark of Corn, CSM going after them. We see the Cyclone Missile Launcher for the Terminators. Not sure if this thing got a change. You see these Terminators giving an AoE damage buff every single time they kill anything, and the Banshees were wrecked there. Mark of Corn, CSM, get away. Inquisitor now picking a fight with Terminators. 
who still have Storm Bolters and Power Fists in addition to that Cyclone Missile Launcher, ouch, Magical Strike wiping CSM out of that building, Keltos now only has his Mark of Corn guys and this Chaos Predator which has Mark of Corn as well, buffs the main auto cannon damage by 25%, I'm not sure if it also buffs the Heavy Bolters on the Sponsons, 89-139 Red Team losing tons of units but retaining a VP advantage here. It's a one to one cap. Is anyone going to cap mid? Here come double guardsmen to try. Devastators with heavy bolter in the middle. Lehman Russ on the field for Twilight Elite. No upgrade yet. And a predator on the way for Dark Riku. There's a cyclone missile launcher doing its thing. Manticore strike again. Red team have no have, haven't really had a chance to make a play for that Manticore. Demon Russ getting shots off. Apothecary able to stay back and support now with that monster crafted bolter. 89-139. Still a 1-1 one -one cap, but blue team will take middle surely. Plasma Devastator. We'll do a lot of damage if we can hit this Lehman Russ. There we go. Boom. Down to half health. Needs to back the hell off. Getting shot up by the Chaos Predator as well. Laz Cannon set up here from the Heavy Weapon team. Chaos Predator needs to be careful. It's blocked at the moment by a line of sight of this container. Farseer trying to cap now. There's Pergatus. And a Manticore Strike, really nice synergy play from Twilight Elite. Stunning with the Pagatas first and the Inquisitor gets away, she's level 8 now. Here is a Predator from Dark Riku, blue team with a huge unit advantage now. We have some Seer Council on the field for G-Pipe, as you can see there. Have a new portrait, which is why I was confused, what the hell are these things? 89-131, time field used on the Chaos Predator to take it out. Arm of the Assyrian giving her that. D cannon getting shots all the way from back there. Look at the range. And almost hit those Devastators. Aspiring Champion Heretics not sure what they're up to, just seeing what's going on I think. Here's the Avatar of Kane. There's a Wailing Doom. Can it hit the Terminators? It does, just about hits them. Keltos now getting some blood letters. Seer Council now in the action. Unique unit to the fast here. Really, really nice melee unit. Very quick. Power weapons leap into combat and reasonably tough. Two to one cap for blue. 89101. Guardian or sorry, Dire Avenger shields being put up. Their advantage is meager. Red team, what are they going to do? Are well, they waiting for anything in particular? Here comes Blood Letters from Keltos and there's a Manticore Strike on the Devastators. Ouch, that was a direct hit and very, very nearly whaps the squad. They get away with 22 hit points and maybe not. Yes, they do. Inquisitor was trying to do a Hammer of the Witches there to finish him off. 89-82, Apothecary heals the Terminators. We have Twin Link Last Cannon now on this Predator. Curse Lord has his Demonic Visage, a really, really nice accessory. Melter Bomb Stormtroopers being sneaky and getting into range for that Melter Bomb. Now trying to take out that Predator. Singularity hits that Plasma Dev. And Red Team just pinned back here completely. Blue Team has so much stuff. Here come Mark of Corn CSM. Aspiring Champion Heretics with Bloodlust has gone off from the Chaos Lord, but Mark of Corn CSM have met their match big time in the form of Seer Council here, and they're getting torn to shreds with Dire Avenger support. And away they go. 89 52. Wailing Doom went off. That's a time field as well. That's Cannon Predator keeping its distance. Avatar of course is super heavy infantry so will take reasonable amounts of damage from heavy bolters and bolters and things. Wrath of Cain misses, Terminators teleported out. 
89-36. Kelstor dead on the central VP trying to cap it no doubt. And some more stuff was just exploded. Seer Council already level 2. Huge map control now for Blue and surely this is Blue's game. Another Lehman Russ for Twilay Lee. Keltos now going for a Blood Crusher. More energy shields going up. No, they didn't finish it. Pogartis again. And the Matigor Strike. Don't think it hit anything. Here comes the Avatar. A Wailing Doom. Bang. Almost finishes off those Devastators. Two models and 81 hit points remaining. Huge final battle in the middle, but this is Blue Team's game. Mark of Corner CSM in there again. What level are these guys? They're level 3. Here comes Seer Council as well. And they're trying to decap, but do not have time. Blue Team win it with 89 VPs remaining. There we go then. There is the Elite Balance mod. I'm sure I got loads of stuff wrong. If you want to check it out, go and see the link in the description. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.